<coughs> he cannot fight Tizim. He would lose. It's honestly an even match. He's in full plate. Tizim's in leather. And Tizim's injured already. What is this? Mm. Can't tell what Marcus is holding. He has like a weapon. But this is Maul. You hear a shakiness in Marcus's voice. You can't hear what though. Stay here. Mm. Don't get involved. We'll be on the sideline. From what you can tell, rolling of a 12, something about what it means to be a knight from Arn. I don't know what to fucking do. Everything you are represents what I'm supposed to be against. Marcus. the seven the voices die a little bit you can't quite hear these fucking waves As you continue to watch and try to listen, hearing bits and pieces here and there, thought runs through your mind. In the event that either party wins, not as even necessarily kills the other, considering if you would or could stop a death blow before it occurs, but how does one recover from this? If Arn wins, what becomes of Marcus? Will he be so disgraced that he simply leaves? Or perhaps does the deed himself? Maybe he'll simply turn himself into the Empire and thusly will be summarily <coughs> executed as a traitor. Will the shame finally be too much for him to bear? Or what kind of path forward will he have? Conversely, if Arn is brought to the brink by this wayward knight by this misguided imperial who has come to fall within your ranks what will Arn feel? shame? disgrace? will he just feel old left behind? you know that Marcus is a man still in his prime and furthermore better armored but Arn has one thing Despite being older, slower, 
certainly not as strong and less armored. Arn only has experience to fall back on in this moment. Rolling the seven, Marcus says something about last one to be told. <clears throat> Got fucking hair in my eyes. Good god. them off now. They are getting fucked off. Hi. God, no, no. Hi. 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 
Now come the fuck on. Listen. Who is it? Pain. He'll be over here. God damn it. I'm looking for Wilford. Get this, get, get this and tell me a thing. What is the thing? Go, go, leave, go. Yeah. Okay. If you see a thing, I'm looking for it. Okay, well, uh... I don't know how everyone just suddenly shows up here. It's like... Rolling. It is 16. You can hear Marcus cry out. You're right, I fucking went through one. Fuck. Do 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 do
17, Arn says something to the tone of, No one should be put through that. Not man, not elf, no <clears throat> one. Mm-hmm. Watch, as soon as I get comfortable, I'm going to have to move. <clears throat> Suddenly, combat music. I've been at this for like 30, 40 minutes. <clears throat> you see him undoing his gloves. throws the glove at Arn. You don't have to accept this, Arn. Don't have to do this by right. I need to go FK for like one second chat, I'll be right back. <laughs> Let me know if I miss anything. Did I miss anything? Rolling something. The 15. You believe you hear Marcus decry. I've kept my faith. I've carried my flame this whole time. Well, that answers that. You see, Arn 
places on his helmet. Weapons drawn. It looks like it's finally business time. Oh, why are you doing this? Typically, the challenger makes the first oh. move, and so he does. <laughs> Giga, just say your way. I see you. He's readying a throwing knife in case shit gets bad. Understood. It hits the heavy cloth, Marcus. You feel it sting, but you do not feel the blood flowing. You think the armor has done its job with the 12. Heavy swing coming down, you go right at the leg. 
and with a seven plus two with the skill gap, you feel the the blood flow from your leg, Marcus. Pain racks your leg, major injury. You stand once more, though, through the pain. Before you even realize you're back on your feet, Marcus, the training doing its job. Better than this, Booker. You're a knight, not a puppet. Maybe I am. Maybe I don't fucking know anymore. Get him on. Another opening right on his arm, but with an 11, if you strike out, the iron plate will hold. The blade made by a dwarf protects you still. The warhammer made by a drow strikes still. <coughs> the handle made by a dwarf. <coughs> serves you still. I does. With a three plus two, it's a heavy things coming again on these ones that feel a lot more rage and smacks you down. And then opening a scene on your back. And then a seven with Shit. the skill gap, you're able to evade just in time before any real damage can be done with a seven plus five. Good. Messer once more, Arn. You two square off. Messer <coughs> charges in once more with an 18 plus 2. See it coming. Rolling. With a 19, the armor will hold once more as a heavy impact is heard on the back plate. <laughs> Come on, how this is a goddamn beak. You 
felt that one dig into the shoulder. That would have gone clean through if you didn't move out of the way just in time. Far closer than you like, and the mall sees an opening and rolling. <coughs> with a two, even with a plus two, it smacks into the leg, and there is a crack that Armor's is hurt. Off. Yep. Yeah. Right into the leg. Definitely running down your leg, Arn. It's not good. Is he able to keep going or not? Rolling. With an eight, if you push yourself, you do not know how long you have. That is all I can tell you now. Pushing yourself on a very bad leg. You think you have maybe one, two more good bouts before you fall. Even with such an injury to his leg, Marcus, he persists. You 
you know what you've done. You know what he's going through now. And as the crowd continues on with a 12 plus 2 arm, you push through that pain and you choose to ignore it. <coughs> strike out at the man in front of you. But with a 16, he's able to evade just in time out of the way to avoid any sort of scratch to his body. Hello, do you bleed me? You see his footing stumble for but a moment. And he says nothing. Readies his stance once more. <coughs> as, as it goes to once more, you, Marcus, you definitely see the footing is starting to slip. He's losing a lot of blood and getting slow. And with a 2 and plus 2, you see the opening. Do you go for it? I will give you that choice. He doesn't. His arm's still going? Thank you very well. As you go, you just, you decide to still misses. continue fighting. You intentionally <coughs> miss. And the fight continues. <sighs> your stance here it's getting much harder to, to stand let alone keep the stance and with a critical one you fall back down to the knee and you do not have the strength to stand up once again no 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 ah! please, please you see a lot of weight being put on the sword in front of him sir brooker you know what that means. He cannot stand. You're more than certain of it. No, 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 no. Don't say it. Don't you fucking say it. He's going to pull out a single potion that is. Okay. You're breaking the doom, Sir Brooker. Please! You made your words clear. I did it, but I don't want you to die. Uh, ah, fuck. Gig, at the risk of another crit, am I able to stand? Rolling. For the 15. Yeah. Yes. You know what you're doing to your body. And as you stand <coughs> apart, you feel a tearing in your life. Fuck's leg. sake. It racks you with pain. But Lord Erdhart, you ignore it. Sir Brooker, you realize what he's just done, and you see the blood flowing from that leg even faster. He stands yet again. Night. I know you yet. I will know that you walk to your own death. You come in swinging with a 12 plus 2. As the altercation continues, your maul is battered out of the way once again, Marcus. And with a 12, you feel a light, you feel a scratch on your side. Light injury. You will not yield. You have said as such. And with a natural 20, you smack the mauled away with all the strength that you have. And with a 9, a heavy slap <coughs> is then put on his side. <laughs> Second major injury. Constitution save Arn. With an A, your vision's starting to get very blurry, but you can still stand. You think you can still fight. At this point, there is no skill gap.
You've lost too much blood. on the line with a 15 you hold your own you can swing out once more and with a 13 another slight injury is put on Marcus's body another hit taken finishes you feel like the thing that's keeping him now him up now more than anything else is adrenaline sir Brooker you don't know how long he has yet he does not yield at this rate with all the injuries, he can't even lift up his hammer. I'll give you a con save. With an 18, if you push yourself, you can. You can continue if it. you wish. Even if you can't fucking hold it on your own. Really? <coughs> Bruh. The assassin swings much quicker and lighter than before. More evasion than, than other things. Now with a 17, you're still able to, to duck and weave as much as you can. And in doing so, you see another opening. And as you do so, you come in quick and dig right into his leg with an 8. Quicken out. Three majors, too light. The, bu the body begins to cry out in pain, Marcus. With an 11, you feel like you can continue going. But at what cost, you do not know. Constitution save on. With a 13, you're still clinging on to consciousness. <coughs> the adrenaline continues to flow. It will not let you be quiet just yet. He's gonna try the pilot especially. He's gonna try to throw it. <laughs> oh boy. Not very honorable. See if it hits. As you go to throw your knife, Marcus, in terms of fight progression with a 7, Arn, you're not able to evade it just in time, but with a 12 for the light injury, it scrapes right across your chest, and you definitely feel it. You grunt in pain, and that's all that's heard, and you see him grasp at his chest, and a small trickle of blood flows from the chest wound. And yet he remains. Come on, smell me. <coughs> For fuck's sake. pain at this point, Arn, because you know what happens next once you go unconscious, and with a 12, you continue just to lay on onslaught after onslaught, and as you do so, you're able to battle his fists out of the way, and with a 4, you're able to hit right into his ribs, and a crack can be heard, as that's a critical. Yes. Save Arn. With a 12, <coughs> you me, yet you're still conscious. He's going to take the advance that was given to him by Faye. He's going to try and give it to Booker. Very well.
As you go to ingest the potion, Marcus, to heal the wound that has been done to your ribs with a 15 plus 2, you feel the bone begin to set itself back into place. It does not feel good in the salitis. Alright, I swear it. Finally, God, that it's listening. You're alright. As the potion is ingested, Arn, you are held from behind. Of I yield. You are held. You are held up from behind as you do not have the strength to stand anymore. Advance healing potion. Drink. Drink. Drink it. God damn it. As you go to ingest the potion yourself with the help of Kyler on with an 18 plus 2, you feel a sudden racking pain in your leg as the flesh stitches itself back together slowly, resetting sinew, tendon. Fuck. Anything else? I have a bandage. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Just sit. It's okay. Still, people who have need of you, they cannot help themselves. There's so little good left in the world. Don't be so eager to snuff your own up. <laughs> There's still time. That was a stupid fucking thing. I'm here. <coughs> Give me a favor. <coughs> and help Sir Brooker. Done it, just to be sure. Well, you too. I will, I swear it. I'm just changing my boots. I'll be right behind. Puts a bandage in your hand. Get it done, now. Thank you. I'll see to this. I'll be coming back. So will I when I'm better. I'll be there soon. Oh. <clears throat> Unlike you, I can't see in the dark. Never could.
You were there the whole time, weren't you? I was here before you showed up. <sighs> Thanks for watching over. I don't understand why. for another time, I suppose. It's over now. What happens now? <sighs> well, I help make enough money to get a fucking boat. We sail on over, do some good, and then die. I think that's the best way I can sum it up. That was the plan before the duel. At least it should have been. Yeah. I thought you were brother. And I am. Take concern of you. I'm not his, remember. Keep flying, we're testing our vows. I know. Fix him if you feel up to it. Everything all right? All right. Inside, uh, got him? Not really. Thank you, Jay. Lightest of footfalls on stone behind you. Stone footfalls you're familiar with. There were people there, they took him in. He's struggling with what the Empire has embraced upon his mind. I heard a few things, yeah. Cannot blame him for it. Why not? I certainly can't trust him after this. Do you mean why not? It is because I can trust him. 
this happened. They wanted to see whose convictions were stronger. We do not leave our allies who suffer behind. I don't know if he's an ally. I've told you he is an ally. I heard what he said. Yes. And it is not the first time he has said it. He has confided to his lord. I'm not even yours. Did you forget what I just said to you? Don't be as hardliner on the other side of things, please. You're far better than that. It's... The hatred of the Empire runs deep. It's hard to just let it kind of walk away after what I just saw. It is. I'm he challenged me to a duel, accepted. That's why I didn't interfere. If he won, he was going to turn himself in. Knowing they would execute him, he would not say a word about us. He is conflicted because he would not betray us. But he feels from his whole life, Kyla, his whole life, this goes against what has been pounded into his head. He's struggling. <clears throat> He needs to see that the Imperium is wrong, and you need to prove it to him. Treating him poorly will only prove his point. And he has protected you with his body. And me. So we just pretend like nothing happened? That is not what I said to you. Are you listening, my son? Not everyone that follows you will give you blind loyalty. They will not just bend the knee because it is right. Some will need to be convinced because they have minds of their own and different beliefs or come from different nations. If you are ever to engage in diplomacy with someone outside of your kind or your people or your kingdom, whatever it may be, you will have to be diplomatic and see that there is a person beneath the fear, the defensiveness, and the concern. You saw what the Imperials did, what the Sergeant did to, to Mirandel. It was out of fear, that sergeant is helpless and can be, he is a boy. He fell back on his indoctrination. You help people out of those pits, you show them that there is a difference. My son, if you are to inherit what I leave to you, there will be dissidents. Not everyone will welcome the Erdharts back. The Imperium has been there for 30 years. Some people will need to be shown. They will need to see it again, especially those born during the occupation. <coughs> I understand that. I understand that. We give people the shot at redemption, I know right? You, are hurt. you did the same to me. I just thought he already was on a level. I just didn't. I don't know if you've noticed, my boy, but people have not exactly been kind to Sir Brooker. Some of our friends have been very flippant. I very careless, brother, every day. 
You do. He struggles with that as well. What would you have me do, my son? I'm still learning. My question stands. <sighs> I don't know. It's not as cut and dry as... I thought it was, I guess. It's very difficult. Mm. Would you have died here? To prove him wrong? How yeah. does that prove him wrong, though? I don't understand. When there are those who uphold particular convictions, the best thing that you can do when a man differs from your beliefs is to get a measure of the man. What drives him? What is his integrity? What is his honor? What is his thought process? What drives him to believe in what he does? Does he say it because it is convenient for him? Does he idolize it because it makes him look good or sound good? Is he willing to fight for it? Is he willing to die for it? How can you say no to a man who would bleed for his conviction? <clears throat> he gave me his word as a knight. That should he yield, he will fall in line and do his best to learn what it is that I have told him is right. See, I thought... But I will not be able to do that alone. I thought that was what was happening since Adwick. Again, you must understand how torn he is. Did he ever tell you where he was stationed? No. Did he ever tell you why he left the Imperium? Not that I remember. Because he was sick to his stomach. He was stationed in a death camp for non-human. Because he saw how they were butchered and savaged and tortured. Because he saw people that he considered brothers and good men commit atrocities. But then again, he was taught his whole life that drow want to destroy man, that elves will pervade and perceive and manipulate, that dwarves will covet and destroy. <sighs> I thought we'd already convinced him, I guess. I didn't realize how much he was harboring. Let me ask you a very simple question, my son, and I expect you to tell me the truth. Despite all the conversations that we have had, and all the things that I have said to you, and all the things I have told you, are you fully convinced in your heart that you could be a lord of Gwyn? Eventually, maybe. But as I've already confided, convinced? I don't feel up to it right now. It seems... You want to believe it. I do. You want to believe you can get there. 
there you want to believe it is possible. That is the same of Sir Brocco. He wants to believe my convictions. He wants to believe my words are right. But that also means admitting to himself that everything he has been taught, his family, his brothers, his service, was a lie. That is a man having to convince himself that his entire life, until now, was pervasive, destructive, and unjust. That is not an easy pill to swallow. But he wants to believe it. And he can be gotten there. You think so? I do. Because... If I'm wrong, then I will spare no one. Let that sink in. Because I want to believe. I'm just not there yet. So Marcus Broker is the chance I'm taking. And I'm unwilling to leave him floundering. I'm hurt. I guess. Beyond as well of this, it's hurtful. They have every right. But also understand, even I am blind to it. How often we confide to each other in our meetings and he's present and it is fucking Imperials. They need to die. We need to kill them. Speaking about them like that, he is an Imperial, he is a Theosian. And all he hears every day is how much we would kill him if his mind was just a little different. I'm not excusing his words, but he conducted himself in an honorable manner. For that, I cannot fault him. You know as well as I do that in the middle of the night you could have gone to the embassy any of these years and pointed. When you are older, my boy, and you sit in that chair, you will be grateful for those who are loud about their problems rather than those who are quiet and scheme. Because at least those who challenge you want a solution. Did the solution come from this, though? <clears throat> he understands your convictions. He understands how much you are willing to fight and die for them. Does that mean he's going to stop trying to <laughs> threaten to burn other drow? If he is truly a man of his word as I believe him to be, yes. Okay. But that also doesn't mean we just abandon someone. We don't just abandon a brother with nothing but their own word and honor to hang upon. You reinforce this. You show them they're wrong. 
You'll be a lord, a leader. I'm not asking you to bring an army into battle. I'm asking you to gain the faith of your men. To keep holding your head high. To shrug off these things that injure our pride. He is not entirely wrong, my son. There are those that would scoff and say that I have a son that is not by my own birthright and that I married a savage of the sea. But not of our company, surely. But if I... Say again. Not someone of our company would say that, though, surely. That's what hurts me. There will be those with opinions. My boy, what matters is that they still bend the knee. They believe in your conviction. Some people will not care for the manner in which you reach it. But only that it is reached. Uh, that is not a majority, however. Most do not suffer such struggles. Gain his loyalty. Prove to him that these teachings are wrong. I can only do so much, my boy. I am merely human. I honestly thought that's what I had been doing. Meh, did you I make mistakes? Been. It is why he is still here. You have been doing the right thing. You just must continue. When things go poorly, my son, amongst the common folk, whether it is famine, or there is a war and you must tax more than usual or conscript, <coughs> The common people will hate you. They need a place to put their blame. Even if it is not fair or not right. Even if you do what you must to ensure their survival. There are some who will never truly understand that and they will point the finger and say it's the Lord. Even my father suffer things as such in time and <coughs> tribulation. You cannot please everyone, and you cannot win everyone over. But you can certainly remain at the top, taking care of those who understand the bigger picture and understand your conviction. And in turn, as it filters down good men and women, will take care of those that you cannot. I see the future in you. I see a proud Lord in the making in you. A one that understands the underbelly of the world. One that will not be poisoned at his dinner table. Do I think that you will be riding around with escorts and plates? No, not till you're old. I'm sure you'll take off your regal robes and you'll put on something equally villainous. <laughs> villainous? And take care of things yourself. Adjust. Actually, and take care of things yourself. I rec recognize that the elven rangers use plate. But it's lightweight and quiet. If I could get my hands on something like that, then I would wear plate around everywhere. But I'd have to do some convincing. <laughs> anyway. I... I understand now. It is okay to be hurt. I am too. Yeah. But I am more grateful that he approached me rather than betray me. It is better this way, though it's not as black and white, I guess. 
There is a lot to learn in terms of ruling and men. Yeah. You would have liked it earlier today. It was um, myself, Morden, and the uh, head elven ranger, Marcelo, looking over orc battle maps, planning our. Uh, I guess it's like a mini campaign. I was trying to channel a bit and of view into it. Go? We have a plan. <laughs> A, a loose plan. I um, copied the map and wrote it in common, and I've left it on your desk. Local ambush points and such of orcs and whatnot. But it was like a little war summit, on a small scale, I guess. I'm proud of you. You continue to exceed my expectations every day. And you show that you're still willing to learn. You come to me with things that upset you, that you question, that you are unsure of. You seek counsel. That is how we grow. Mm. That sigh sounded heavy with soul, my boy. Is it? <clears throat> Just when I think I'm getting a hang of things, I realize I still have a lot to learn, I guess. Which is good. Keeps me busy. <clears throat> You're gaining every day. Though I have to ask. What were you doing here? <clears throat> Found the remnants of the note in the forge that he left for you. Only a few bits were there, but uh, I was a little worried. But I came down to have a look, and I put two and two together. I was careless of me. It's fine, I cleaned up your mistake. Thank you, my boy. It's been a while since I have fought that hard. Yeah, I was gonna say, it was a hell of a fight. So Broker is quite the fighter. It took a lot for me not to intervene, but I understand the honor of it. I'm grateful you did not. It would have solidified what he thought. I know. <sighs> oh. Gods above. How I long to see you on the throne. <laughs> Not too long now. I dream of it. I dream of it night and day. I would give anything to see it. Still picture the whole. Long lined. Beautiful fabrics. The windows stained glass depicting our forefathers. <laughs> Places for those at court to sit wrapped around the left and right. <laughs> the wearings and the stone where the guards have stood for God knows how long. At noon, sitting on that throne is the most magnificent and annoying thing 
I have ever experienced. Mm -hmm. The light comes through the stained glass and it is beautiful. <sighs> but it reflects right into the throne. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure you can throw down some carpets, my boy. <laughs> I'll take a break at lunchtime or something. <laughs> The Trinity of Liberation had always intended to uphold its word to the King of the Eastern Elves and all. They were always intended to get their land back. In return, they were to assist in invading the outer provinces stolen by the Empire. <coughs> So many different colored banners, human, elven, dwarven. The sun glinting off of plate and banners of yellow and purple. Elves of greens and golds, dwarves of browns. All shoulder to shoulder. was unreal and it was for as far as the eye could see stretching across the plain it was feeling then of certainty that nothing could go wrong it was brief but it was magnificent to see so many stand for the same thing Marched their rifles at first. We did not know what the night killers were yet. Did not ever see those weapons yet. And they all fired volley after volley. The front few lines broke. They did not run. But they lost well over half of the men in their units as condensed night killers fired at them. <clears throat> and right after, like a tidal wave, came the cataphrags to ensure that the lines broke. How do you even counter that? How do you fight that? Conviction. I am the only man in history, as I told you, to have stopped a cataphract charge. Now we were all terrified. I was terrified. The splendor of their armor, the sharpness and length of their lances, there is no doubt about it, regardless of what drives them, they were very well-trained, regimented men. What it took was for all my men to hear my words and obey. To say to themselves, I might die for this. But I must. Had we broken, the reserve forces, our longbowmen, anyone in the rear that were wounded, never have gotten away in time. They would have been ridden down. 
<clears throat> it is because we stayed and consigned ourselves to our conviction. But those cataphracts never passed us. Brainstormed. I should probably apologize to Marcus. For what? I was pretty cold to him on the way over there. And I guess if I ever felt made him feel like he wasn't family, you know, all these years. And that is why I have high hopes for you. My son it does not matter if you are of my blood. You are mine. My son. My heir. And I am proud. Yeah, I guess I got a little, um... <clears throat> hot-headed when I heard that. <laughs> you and me both. But I remained measured. As much as I wanted to draw my blade. <clears throat> I knew that he had come to me because he wanted to be proven wrong. catch him before he falls asleep. You okay here, or do you want to head back? I will come with you. I just need to put on my boots. Sure. You know, it's funny. Mm hmm When I don't look at them, my hands, they always charge very quickly. <clears throat> but when I do, I swear to God, they don't charge where they should. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was smart because I thought I'd be here late tonight so I charged them throughout the day a little bit <clears throat> does that mean I get to spend more time with you? <laughs> I got like another 30 minutes or so well after those 30 minutes would you like to try what we practiced throughout the night? <clears throat> to see if you can control a horse in the dark. <laughs> we can give it a shot. I actually stopped by him uh, earlier and gave him a brush like you showed me. <laughs> <clears throat> I saw. I wanted to check on him myself and I saw he was already tended to. Mm -hmm. I even gave him a carrot too. Horses love carrots. <clears throat> I will not lie to you. I am in so much pain. Maybe a trip to the bathhouse or something. Clean you up a bit. I was talking to Basil the other night, and she already offered to make sure she looks after us if we ever get wounded. Yeah, she made it very clear that she would <coughs> pamper me, whatever that means. Yeah, she said the same to me. I've done a lot of strange things in my life, my boy. I don't think that's going to be one of them. <laughs> get pampered in a bathhouse. Get pampered by the same woman as my son. <laughs> well, there's other bathhouse girls there. I tell you what, though, there are some, there are some filthy bathhouses in Coricatus. 
Be some really terrible things there. As in, not cleaned or raunchy. <laughs> Both. <laughs> well, Fred, I saw you glowing in the dark. Have you, did you come to eat me in case I died? All cats do that with their owners, you know. You don't have to answer that. <clears throat> but I know you would. Waste not, want not, I suppose. Walk it off, big guy. Walk it off. <laughs> you hit me in my bad leg, you smart. I saw. Tempting to get you a cane. Yeah. Maybe one with a sword in it. I've seen some noble people have like canes with like little rapiers in them. I'll be honest, my son. I do everything in my power to forget how old I've become. I would rather not. I wouldn't sue you anyway. What was that? <laughs> it wouldn't suit you anyway. A cane. No, you don't think I could be a proper gentleman? I'm sure you could be a proper gentleman, but you need like an outfit to match. I remember one noble. Seeing something gaudy white with a lot of furs. That's not, right, yeah. I remember this one noble in Korokeda showed up, and their hat was like a tube, but it went up taller. It was so strange. Stop. Stop. Did you see Sarah tonight at all? Did I see her? Yeah, she was around earlier. I've been worried about her. She seemed very restless today. She's not been doing too hot. I've been trying to look after her. She does know she's one of us, right? I tell her. You think there's something we can do to prove it to her? I'll think on it. There might be something. I know what it's like to feel like you're on the outside. <laughs> I think a few people have been feeling like that recently. That's why I've dragged as many people as I could into the same spot finally and made it clear one team, one fight. So I can lean on you, my boy. I don't want to. Fall over. I got you. Uh, if you two want, you can go to the bathhouse and relax. Call it. Bit. <laughs> so you did. Where do you want to head to? Get this armor off first. <clears throat> right, they could help with that. Uh. 
I'm married. I, I know. Just joking. She would murder me. Yeah, and them. <clears throat> no, she wouldn't. She would say, I understand that Arnulf is <laughs> beguiling. <coughs> he is charming. I, um... Had a chance with the redhead last night. Didn't feel right. Still figuring everything out, I guess. Well, I will tell you something that'll make you not happy with me, my son. <clears throat> I throw that out of anger. Sooner or later, I would have objected to Liliana. Because she's an oathbreaker. And she put her romance and her love over her duty. And that is not someone I respect. It was a conversation I was avoiding. I guess it sorted itself out then. I do not mean to be harsh, son. But if you're going to be in the position that you say that you are consigned to be in, you need someone who shares your conviction. Sorry, I just... If you were sorry, you wouldn't be there. I was just going to say... Glad you're okay. Um, there's a lot of blood. Why wouldn't I be? There's a lot of blood. Fair. <clears throat> I can go, you're having a moment. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. I kind of... After she left, I kind of came to terms with... I don't know. Probably getting married to some other noble and then forming an alliance or something. That's not exactly something that I'm saying I would force upon you. But you have to think of how other people would view you, view that. A difference in people is one thing. A breaking of an oath is another. And then you would have to think, what would Erland as a whole think of me? What would my own nobles think of me? What would those who hold oaths in high regard think of me as a ruler? I do not doubt there was love. I don't. And it is why I kept my mouth shut. Yeah. Well. Like I said, handled itself. Are you upset with me? No. I'm not upset with you. It's okay if you are. No, I'm not. I understand. And it doesn't really matter anyway. Anymore. How you feel always matters to me. I'm not even obeying what I'm saying, if you realize. Raylan was in exile. It just... It just keeps hurting. It keeps happening. It'll be better than me, my boy. Because I let myself hurt for... What was my whole life. And I blinked and I realized I've missed so much. 
You have many places to travel and go, and people to meet and things to see and a name to make for yourself, and your life will be so much different. There will be someone out there who you will fall madly in love with. Someone that is beholden to the same things that you are, that does not stand against you, but holds you up. Gives you strength when you are weak. Fights alongside you. Thought I had that already. It's just not. A... I wasn't successful the first few times I've caught it either, my son. I'm kind of putting a pause on it for now, I guess. The whole romance thing We've got bigger things to do with anyway, so. Which is fun. As have I. Yeah, but you're married. You're like locked in. I'll say to you again. I'll say again to you what I said to Mirandel. I am glad that she is gone. Because I cannot get her killed. Still feels lonely though, doesn't it? Trust me. <laughs> I slept in my bed for the first time yesterday since she left. I haven't been in mine. You should allow yourself to rest. You are doing nothing wrong. It is okay to not be okay. When you are alone, when you are with your father, the armor can come off. Always. You do not need to be strong for me when we are with each other. You are my son, my boy, my everything. The world is harsh. And no matter how much you grow, you will be my little boy. <laughs> Same little runt that was outside my thoughts when I first met him. I'm sorry, I will never see you different than that. <laughs> I can't Got shoes that. now and everything. You do, but... You'll understand one day. Thank you. You don't need to thank me, my boy. I'm merely telling the truth. Funnily enough, I was quite pleased when we had returned home, and I was lucky to see that <sighs> that little grave behind our house was undisturbed. Yeah. for a little bit. I'm not ready to deal with people and I still have a little of your time, so I will enjoy it. <sighs> 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 
Busy day after busy day. <clears throat> busy, but productive. At least that's how I feel about it. Hmm, yeah. At least we got everyone together. That's the main thing. It's time to start ruling. These people follow us. It's time to start using that appropriately. Give everyone a direction. Keep everyone on task. Make everyone report in. Use what everybody's connections and are good at in our favor. <clears throat> because sooner or later there will be Imperial ships in this armor. And we need to stop that from happening. We must. No matter what the cost is. <clears throat> there were some people looking for us today. Great. More people. Well, they said they were like debt collectors or something. But I reckon that was a... Sort of like bullshit, because we don't have debts for anyone. They said they were looking for a man with a griffin on his chest and a drow. Do you know how many people came to... Came to what? There's a ship moving up harbor. Came to what? There's a what? There's a ship moving. I can't see a bloody yeah. thing. It's got three masts. Was that a galleon? No, that would be a frigate. Good for moving cargo. Then it's a frigate. Six cannons, maybe? Blacked out. They don't want to be seen. I can't see fucking anything. <clears throat> it's heading uh, northwards. I think this is the ship we were talking you about. Sure, you see it. Oh, I see it. <sighs> so then that's true. Why would a ship be here so late at night? <clears throat> you can see which way it entered the harbor from, but I would assume Black Rock. That's the ship we're looking for. Come on. We're not gonna get involved, but we're gonna borrow your horse. Oh boy. And we're gonna see just how far <clears throat> it's gone. They must be really good at what they do if they're blacked out like that. I would say, wouldn't they not be able to fucking see? Unless... Hmm. You're all right with riding, bitch. <laughs> I assume that's a yes. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> we gonna get you a horse. Move yourself back a little bit. Yep.
Just doing the uh, reset thingy of Obi. Okay. <sighs> okay. Ready? Yep. We'll be back, Wilfred. Probably. Maybe. Wait. Hmm? He's twenty at the tavern. Uh, we could swing by and look. Might be in the Go bathhouse. Them. We've seen the ship. Oh, yeah. What? He's gonna whisper to you. We've seen the bloody ship moving up the canal. We're gonna go confirm where it's landing. We're not gonna go close. We're going to figure it out. If you see Torty, let her know. We'll have your information soon. Understood. Thank you. Ha! <laughs> oh, okay. Just hold on to me, you'll be fine. Blacked out like that. Do you think there's any drow aboard? Yeah, they'd have to be. Or taking potions or something, otherwise they wouldn't be able to navigate. Potions, it might be the case. If they are dealing Hold on, there's a horse up ahead. Are, why would they stop? I think that's the one from that dead Imperial earlier in the day. <sighs> Everything around it looks dark red. Yeah. I just didn't want you to hit it at Mark 5. What's Mark 5? Really, really fast. <laughs> Do you see it to our left at all? Too many bushes. I'm not confident enough to off-road at night. We'll have to look for gaps, and that's it. Does the horse need to see to be ridden well? Most do, yes. That's why I bring the torch. It's trusting me. You could very easily run a horse off a cliff in the middle of the night. So if I, like, got this horse to trust me enough, could I ride it at night blacked out? Possible, but there is a chance of it breaking its legs if you go off-roading. Mm. <clears throat> Maybe I get a lantern or something, just in case. Oh, it might be possible to give them a potion, I don't know. <sighs> That's the Do way... Do we check Belano? It's gotta go past Belano, there's no dock at Belano. But maybe we can see it sailing, or do you think it's past already? <sighs> it's probably past, it was moving pretty quick. Then there's got to be a way. Ha! <clears throat> but there's no roads. There's nothing. If it's just past Belano, oh, we would see something. Well, we know roughly where the coast is. Ooh. It's alright. But it makes no sense. There's a road to the left to- I think that's to the temple. Well, that's to the temple of Asora. We could at least see the coast from there, maybe. <sighs> Do we check it? We'll keep going. We don't want to overshoot. This is the only road heading Hello? to the coast. <coughs> we might be able to get down onto the beach or something. Up ahead. Be careful, it's a really thin one. I see it. Uh, 
happen. Please, by Mithrax, do not let a low-hanging branch kill me now. That would be really awkward. Oh, fuck! Oh. Be very careful. Hey, you're taller than me. It's gonna hit you first. Yes, but then your horse will be driverless. Ah. It's in your best interest that I survive. Understood. Coming up to the temple now. We just need a view into the channel. Take a right here when it pops up. There's no pop up, never mind. Right. Steps up ahead. If we could get up high, I might be able to see something. <clears throat> I'll see if we can spot it from here. If we can. And tomorrow we'll take the others to investigate. You, Sarah, Torty. Works for me. And Kate as well. Yo, was he talking about guerrilla warfare? When he left, Kate joined the Red Lady and her insurgents. Huh. They were fighting the Imperium in their back lines. Wait. I see sails. I see sails. We have to be careful, otherwise they'll see us from the crow's nest if there's anyone up there. Just the top of them. Very. <clears throat> Peek over the ridge, I'll wait. Yeah, it's the. It's doctor, like a small town. There's like substantial buildings there. No shit. Are you serious? Yeah, come here. He's gonna grab you. Carefully follow. Uh, even if you bring me over, I, I'm not gonna see anything. They have like lanterns now that they're docked. You might be able to see something. in or out. Actually, there is. Yeah. That has to be for cards. Over here, down the back. Through the cliff face. Then we'll have... We'll have to find that. Right. Oh, we've been here too long, especially if they can see in the dark. Right. We need to go. Mm. Good fucking eyes, my boy. Yeah, I thought it was weird. Solves that. My torch. <clears throat> Got it here. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Let's get the fuck out of here in case we were seen. Yeah. not a bad overlook from there. Then when we have three pairs of eyes, we'll investigate it tomorrow. The ship probably won't be there, because remember, they leave um, during the night as well, so we're less likely to be spotted as well. Well, while you're right, it is also likely Whatever work they're doing <clears throat> might require more than one trip, or so I hope. You ready? Ready. That's actually genius. No one would know. No one would even think twice. It's so well hidden. God damn it, with pilgrims coming and going, no one would bat an eye at wagons on the road out of here. That's incredibly smart. <sighs> that would be how they're moving it around then. At least from the immediate. And I would have missed that if it wasn't for you. <clears throat> Perks of being a drow, I suppose. We don't get many of them, but... I would like to change that. I still don't see how they get over there. There's got to be some sort of road. Well, we'll have three pairs of eyes tomorrow night. We'll fucking find it. Oh, yeah. Right, I checked the uh, dead drop last night as well. Anything new? Chat, drop the thing. Yeah, they, uh, basically some berating. <clears throat> From a person called, uh, Sicard. Berating. Yeah, they were yelling at uh, Naraz. They mentioned them by name. Sakad. Mm-hmm. I've heard that name before. Where have I heard that? I'm not sure. It does sound familiar, doesn't it? No, we've definitely heard that name before. Sakad. I hear so many names, it's hard to remember. I think that's the Capitano's name. Is it? I think it is. <clears throat> I think I heard it muttered when they were all around the forge breaking my arm. Hmm. Well... Still not your fault. The gist of it was that people from the Free Wharf have started skimming money off the top of them, of what they were trying to make. Uh, he mentioned a name. Apparently he switched buyers. The rest of it is basically... Switched buyers? Yeah, I don't know what that means. I've already switched buyers. They have no idea their middleman fucked up. Make sure everyone else falls in line. Blah, blah, blah. So there's that. Well, at least we understand the situation a little better. Yeah. <clears throat> we can disseminate this information tomorrow. 
He's clearly floundering. You think so? Well, he switched buyers. <laughs> He's desperately trying to make this money and do it securely. It just reeks of someone desperately trying to hang on to it. At least, from what I've experienced. I'm proud of my ability to deal with the jitters of the stone steps. <laughs> yeah, when I tried it, it was uh, up and down. <sighs> I'll uh, definitely get better at riding. I'm sorry you had to ride back. Sorry the lesson went badly. Again. It's dangerous out here. Dangerous out there tonight. Make sure you get inside if you're just arriving. Of course. Thank you. Mm. Well, practice will make uh, look, we'll make a rider out of you yet. <laughs> Glad you got to stretch your legs today. Going <sighs> home now. Not a bad idea. Spending time with you is always a plus. So. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Any chance to learn? Your priority tomorrow morning will be to speak to Sir Brooklyn. Understood. And then we will take care of everything else. All right. I'm off to bed. You wait me if you need me, okay? I think I'm going to sleep as well. Good. After all that. I'm exhausted. Yeah. My gut is killing me, my leg is killing me. I wish someone would just kill me and stop killing me. <laughs> he nearly punched his rib out. I was... 
Yeah, well, you did shed your own armor and weapons. I wasn't going to keep an advantage that he did not have. His armor was sundered. Okay. He lost his armor, I lost mine. He did not have the strength to pick up his maul. We both switched to daggers. That's he when it started getting interesting. Throw it. I was expecting like a... Instead, you saw two men. <laughs> yeah, he threw his, like, immediately. Ugh. <laughs> they almost got me. It cut me across my chest. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> Not bad. Maybe I'll teach him a thing or two. Exchange knowledge. Train together. It's a big thing with soldiers and men. When you get down in the mud with them, they see a lot more of you than you realize. Good night, my son. Good night. Get some rest. See you tomorrow. <laughs>